All right, today we're going to take a look at Unit 11, Lesson 3, Solving Systems by Elimination. In this section, you're going to be able to solve a system of equations and choose the most efficient method to solve. Now, one thing that we need to recall is standard form. That's our AX plus BY equals C, where A and B will both be coefficients. Remember, your solution should always be written as an ordered pair. And you need to make sure that you are always checking your solution. So to take a look at our first example, we're going to solve using elimination. What this means is that our equations both have to be written in standard form. So if we take a look at our first example, A, they are written in standard form. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one thing to eliminate by adding them together. So if I were to add 2x plus a negative 2x, those would actually cancel out. So those are going to be what I'm going to eliminate. So I have 3y plus 3y is 6y. And then I have 11 plus 13 is 24. This allows me to be able to solve for one variable at a time. Next thing, we just have our one-step equation. Divide both sides by 6. So I have that y equals 4. Now, I need to figure out what our x value is. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this 4 back into either equation. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm just going to take the first one here. So I have 2x plus 3 times 4 equals 11. So 3 times 4 is 12. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I have 2x equals negative 1. Oops, sorry there. Divide both sides by 2, and I get that x is equal to a negative 1 half. Now, we need to remember that your answer should always be written as an ordered pair. So my x value comes first, so negative 1 half. My y value is 4. So this will be my answer here. Now, if you recall, when we looked at substitution and graphing, this is the point of intersection between these two lines. They aren't in slope-intercept form, so you need to make sure that you realize that these are still equations of lines. If we move on to our next one, again, we have to pick what we want to eliminate. Again, we're going to set up so that we can add down and eliminate. So if I look at my x's, I'm going to eliminate those. So x plus negative x is going to be 0. And then negative 2y plus 2y is also going to be 0. And that's going to be equal to 14. So what happened here is both of our variables canceled out. So we have to look at this statement here. Is 0 equal to 14? This isn't true, so this is going to be no solution, which means that these lines are never going to intersect. Okay, moving on to part C. This one's a little bit different because if you take a look at the second equation, it isn't written in standard form. So we have to do that. So to do that, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So now if I rewrite, I have 8x minus 4y equals negative 4. And then I have 3x plus 4y equals 14. Now when I line up, to add them together, you should notice that we have a negative 4y and a positive 4y. So right away, I'm going to eliminate my y's because when I add those together, they're going to equal 0. So when I take 8x plus 3x, I have, oops, sorry, this should be a negative 3. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. My fault. So this will be 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5 here, and I get x is equal to 2. Now remember, your answer is always written as an ordered pair. So I have my x value of 2, but I still need to find my y. So what I can do is go ahead and plug this solution back into either equation again. Again, either one will work. I'm just going to take the top one. So I have 8 times 2 minus 4y equals negative 4. 8 times 2 is 16, so I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. 
So those cancel here, so I have a negative 4y equals negative 20. Divide both sides by negative 4. A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive 5. So then this can go back up in my solution here. So my point of intersection will be at 2, 5. Now, make sure you make this correction that we don't add 3x to both sides, that we need to subtract. That was my fault. Sorry about that. Okay, so these are our first type of elimination problems. Again, you're going to skip the U-tries for now, and we will work on those in class tomorrow. Now, if we take a look at example two, these ones are a little bit different because if you look at the equation, they are both in standard form here. However, the problem is we don't have anything that we can eliminate right away. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pick, do we want to get rid of my x's or do I want to get rid of my y's? For this one, I'm going to get rid of my x's. So that means that I need to have the same coefficient, but one being opposite so that I can get them to cancel out. So what that means is I'm going to take this bottom equation and multiply it by a negative 3. So if I rewrite the top, I have 6x plus 5y equals 19. Nothing changed there. On the bottom now, though, I need to make sure that I distribute this negative 3 to every single term. So I have negative 6x minus 6y equals negative 15. So now if I set up for elimination, my x's do in fact cancel out. 6x plus a negative 6x is 0. I have 5y plus a negative 6y will give me negative 1y. And then I have 19 minus 15. And this is going to give me a positive 4. Again, I need to get that y by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. So I have that y is equal to negative 4. Now, again, you need to find that solution for x. You always want to plug back into the original equation. So with that being said, I'm going to take just this first equation here, and I have 6x plus 5 times negative 4 equals 19. 5 times negative 4 is a negative 20, so to get rid of it, I'm going to have to add 20 to both sides. So those cancel. So I have 6x equals a positive 39. Divide both sides by 6. Again, this doesn't really work out to be a nice number for us. Fractions are possible answers. So let's just go ahead and reduce this, which will reduce to 13 halves. So my solution here will be 13 halves for my x value, and my y value will be negative 4. So, looking back at this real quick, you still need to pick what you want to eliminate. Do you want to get rid of your x's or your y's? And then to do that, you need to have that coefficient in front be the opposite sign of the one that you were working on. Now, if we take a look at part B, again, the first thing we should always check for is if we are in standard form. For the second equation, we're not, so we need to move this 5x over. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides to start. So when I rewrite, my first equation stays the same, 15x minus 3y equals 12. And then my second equation now is negative 5x plus y equals negative 4. We'll make sure we include that sign in front. So now here, we want to pick what we want to eliminate. I think what would be easier here is to eliminate my y's. Then I only have to multiply the top and bottom, or the bottom equation, by 3. So if I rewrite, I have 15x minus 3y equals 12. That first equation stay the same. Now the second equation, you need to make sure that you distribute that 3 to every term. So I have negative 15x 
plus 3y equals a negative 12. Now we're going to go ahead and combine these. 15x plus a negative 15x will be 0. So those are eliminated. And then if I look at my next one, negative 3y plus 3y, those are actually eliminated. And then on the other side, 12 plus a negative 12 is also 0. So again, we have a situation where both of our variables canceled out. So you need to look at the statement. Is 0 equal to 0? Yes, this is true. This is a true statement. This does work. So this means that we are going to have infinitely many solutions. This is my answer here. So remember, if the statement isn't true, it will be no solution. If it is true, then you'll have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so again, let's turn to that next page here, and we're going to skip these new tries for now, but let's jump down to example three. Now, these ones are a little bit more tricky, but very doable. The difference here is, if you look at them, neither of them have a common factor that we can eliminate right away. So what's going to happen here is we're actually going to have to multiply each equation by something. So I think here I am going to eliminate my x's. Again, you can eliminate the y's, but you need to find terms that they have in common. So I'm going to eliminate my x's. So I need to find a term that both of these go into. So for me, I'm going to say that they're both going to multiply to 24, which is true. So that means that I need to have a positive 24 and a negative 24. So my top equation, I'm going to multiply by negative 3, and my bottom equation, I'm going to multiply by a positive 4. So again, same thing we did last time. You need to make sure that you distribute your number on the outside to each term. So I have negative 24x plus 21y equals a positive 9. On the bottom here, you have to distribute that 4 to each term, and I have 24x minus 20y equals negative 4. So now if I line up to eliminate, my x's do cancel out like I need them to, and I have 21y plus a negative 20, which just leaves me a y, 9 plus a negative 4 is a positive 5. So my y value is 5. So now what I need to do is still find that x value. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this back into the original equation. Again, you can pick either one. I'm just going to pick the top one. So I would have 8x minus 7 times 5 equals negative 3. So I have Negative 7 times 5 is a negative 35, so to get rid of it, I need to add 35 to both sides. So I have 8x equals 32. Divide both sides by 8, and I have x is equal to 4. So now I can write my solution as an ordered pair. My x value is 4, and my y value is 5. Again, you can go ahead and check these back into these equations, something that you should be doing. Check your solutions. All right, let's jump over to part B now. This will be our last example for the notes. Again, first thing you should always check, are we in standard form? This isn't the case here, so we need to make sure that we move this into standard form first. So that would mean that I'm going to have to subtract 5x from both sides to start. So my equations will be 3x minus 7y equals 5 and negative 5x plus 9y equals 5. Now, here I want to pick something that I'm going to eliminate again. I'm going to go with my x's just because I know that 15 works easily with 5 and 3. So that means that I'm going to have to multiply both equations again. So 
So I'm going to have to multiply the top one by 5 and the bottom equation by 3. So now when I distribute to each one, my top equation will be 15x minus 35y equals 25 because you need to make sure that you distribute to every single term. And then on the bottom I have negative 15x plus 27y equals 15. So now I'm going to go ahead and eliminate. Again, my x's do cancel out like I needed them to. And then I have negative 35 plus 27 gives me a negative 8y equals 40. Divide both sides by negative 8. And I get y is equal to negative 5. Now, we need to find that x value. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it back into the first equation. So I have 3x minus 7 times negative 5 equals 5. Negative 7 times negative 5 is a positive 35. So to get rid of it, I'm going to subtract 35 from both sides. So I have 3x equals negative 30. Divide both sides by 3. And I get x is equal to negative 10. Now again, I have my solution, so I need to write this as an ordered pair. I have negative 10, negative 5 as my answers. So the biggest difference here is in order to eliminate, we need to multiply both equations by something to either eliminate your x's or your y's. Again, you can pick which ones you want to eliminate. You just need to make sure that you find factors or terms that they have in common. Again, we'll try these U tries in class tomorrow. Go ahead and make sure that you fill out the bottom of that note sheet. What did you learn? What do you still have questions on? And we will see you tomorrow.